today we are going to take Ian and Ro with the four of us down Rio Diablo. Don't know how long we'll be going down the river. We're just gonna prepare some wraps and snacks that, to take with us and hopefully we see some crocodiles. Welcome to another update from Elixir's voyage around the world. I still can't believe that we sailed all the way from the UK to Panama. It's been an epic voyage and there's still so much to see. This week we're still in the Gunayala region, a collection of near perfect tropical islands and a fascinating local culture. We've been here for two weeks, sailing between the islands, living off grid as a crew of five with an average age of 24. Join us as we discover more of this fascinating region. Yeah, this morning, woke up at five, rode Emily to shore. She got on a boat, a lancha, to take her to Cardi. For, it's gonna take her like three hours. It's funny, honestly, you can really feel the difference when just when you're five and then just one person leaves. It really feels different, four versus five. I'm gonna miss her a lot. But we'll be seeing her again, meeting up with her. Never goodbye. It's just see you soon. See you later. Yeah. Soon a bit like. Seen a bit like. That's literally what we said when we were saying goodbye. I was like, see you in a bit. And she goes, see you in a bit like. So yeah, I'm going to miss her. We really bonded a lot and had such a fun couple of months. So I love Emily. She's hilarious. She's one of a kind. Well, it's been two months since Ian got his engine stolen in Colombia. So we're probably some of the first people who are rowing in a dinghy like this on Rio Diablo. <laughs> yeah, we still haven't been able to find an engine, which sucks. Focus del Toro was not a good place to find one, and now we've just been like cruising around San Blas, which is also not a great place, so. Rowing it is. You could literally hear the oars. <laughs> We're having to deal with some breaking waves in the mouth of this river. It's a bit unclear as to how we navigate here. Dom's pretty clever, I'm sure he'll figure like it out. going anywhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to pass me that oar? Yeah. Does that actually help? Definitely going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. oh. Here come the breakers. Oh. oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh god! Let's swap that. Yeah, we need to stop though. We can't be paddling. Some of us wind up in the water. Go on, shoo shoo. I can't move at the same time shoo -shoo. you're I can't move at the same time you're moving. There's no space for me to go because Dom moved to the donkey moved to the other Woo! side now. I won't be walking through the sand in crocodile territory though. Alright, we made it to the river mouth. Watch your head. You're gonna lose your hat. Update, we've been rowing down River Diablo for almost an hour now. Actually, yeah, like an hour now. We took a little stop off the bank of the river, took some photos, ate a snack, and now we're just drifting down. In 10 minutes, Max is gonna jump in, and then we're gonna row back. Oh, the wind is really pushing us right now. <laughs> gonna go for a swim in the river. Haven't really seen any wildlife, but it's okay. It's gonna be nice to go in some fresh water. We haven't seen any crocodiles so far. We can assume that there's none in this river. Yeah, we can assume that we're safe. It's refreshing, but I'm scared of crocodiles. I know, me too. Oh. Really? <laughs> I'll do this. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Scary. Okay. That was probably the scariest one I've ever done. I know, it's a little sus. Be careful, Dom. Where the 
peanut butter and banana tortillas. Yum. That was really, really cool. It was really fun way to spend the morning. And now I'm just paddling to the beach. To the beach. <laughs> because the wind. Oh man. Oh shit. Trying to go upwind in Ian with four people and two broken oars. <laughs> Fighting a losing battle. <laughs> Quick! <laughs> Quick! To whoever stole Ian's outboard engine, I really hope you're using it. <laughs> because <laughs> I reckon we would be getting far better use out of it, but you know. <laughs> Sand Blast has an abundance of scenic sheltered anchorages. Sometimes we'd visit two or three in a day. They're all beautiful and so close to each other. The wind was great the whole time. This place truly is a sailor's paradise. Like your headband. Thank you. It's made by the Guniala. I like the parrots in it. It's really paradise. And I got to see a shark today, which was cool for my last snorkel. Yeah. Been good. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> And you don't? I think my highlight was probably the first day we arrived, and like, because we arrived at night and um, anchored up at night and then woke up that first morning. It's an amazing sunset and incredible desert islands. And then this anchorage as well, I don't know what it was about this anchorage, it's like super scenic, really nice breeze, not too many other boats. And we kind of come from like a busier settlement the night before, and it was just really nice to get back out to the islands and switch back into that just totally relaxed vibe. Are you guys sad to be leaving? Yeah. I'll miss waking up to the ocean. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Just walking up the stairs, being surrounded by palm trees and wildlife. How you feel, Max? You're losing your British crew. Yeah, that bit sucks, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna be outnumbered again. <laughs> it's been nice having my an old friend and my sister sailing. That hasn't happened yet. It's been really nice three weeks. A nice group of people, everyone's been getting along. A really, really special part of the world, I think. Like, mm. really unique. These islands have managed to retain such a unique cultural identity despite being part of Panama that's this crazy like financial world full of foreign money and tax evaders and then there's just this little bit of coastline full of the Guniala who live on these beautiful little islands and make amazing artistic creations and are amazing sailors and really cool people. <laughs> so yeah, it's been nice. Paddling around on a dugout canoe, that was definitely a highlight for me because, wow, what an incredible vessel that was. <laughs> like, just made out of a single tree and you just get in it and it's like surprisingly quick. So cool. Then after we had to go rowing it around, Anthony just put up his sail and just flew off. <laughs> definitely the highlight for me. I'm sat here on the bow, checking for reefs or any shallow patches of water. It's a pretty cloudy day today, but the wind is perfect. One thing about San Blas that makes it such a great sailing destination, not only the hundreds of picturesque, beautiful islands that you can sail to, but the wind is extremely consistent. There's always wind, but one thing that isn't consistent is the charts. We have to have someone who sits on the bow or stands in the front and just looks for reef or any shallow patches, any changes in the water. Because we have encountered a few places where the chart said that there was deeper water, but there was clearly reef and shallow water. We dropped off Emily yesterday and now we're sailing to Karti. And 
and we're gonna drop off Bella and Dom. And then Max and I are gonna meet up with uh, Bill and Grace and Brian and Kaza and we're gonna spend some time here in San Blas for a little bit longer, just relaxing and enjoying the islands before we head to the Panama Canal, which is really exciting. It's really cool to come to San Blas on the boat and spend this time on the boat because we, I couldn't have got here any other way and you really see it and manage to see all the islands, which has been really cool. That's really special, just being able to jump straight off the boat and going snorkeling, it's really cool. It's been really different doing yoga in San Blas, just waking up in the mornings, taking the paddleboard to the beach, just finding a spot under some palm trees, looking up and just palm trees and wildlife and birds, it's pretty cool. I don't really have many low lights except just being really seasick for from coming from Bocas to San Blas. First two days, just passed out. It wasn't that bad, I don't remember too much, but yeah, that's probably the only bad thing that's happened this whole time. It's been pretty great. <laughs> At home, I work as a chef back in the UK in Cornwall. Cooking on the boat <laughs> is certainly different to cooking in a commercial kitchen. I've adapted a lot more to the situation swapped out recipes, experimented with ingredients, cooked with plantain, which was new. Cooking with two hobs and a temperamental oven has also been a fun challenge after everything takes four times as long as it normally would, especially when you're cooking for five people. <laughs> so one time I was using the oven and cooking a chocolate cake. First of all, it was, had taken twice as long to even cook because the oven wasn't getting to heat. And as I was taking it out to check it, the boat rolled and I slipped and the whole cake ended up on the floor. But on the licks there's no waste, so we just got away the dirt and made it all into cake pops with peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> which all got eaten pretty quick, so it worked out fine in the end. And then I made another cake, which tasted good too. <laughs> Baking Harry's bread in the pressure cooker. I don't know, I think it's ready. Bella said once it bounces back, it's like ready, so. It's a Harry loaf. It's really quite easy, actually. Like, you just mix sugar, salt, yeast, and water, and then flour, and then let it rise, and then you bake it in this nice little pot in the pressure cooker for 50 minutes. It's pretty simple. Basically, now we'll just let it cool while we go to shore, visit this island, and then we come back. Maybe a snack, or maybe we'll save it for dinner. Whatever. Right now, we're anchored off of a smaller island um, that's kind of more populated, so we haven't been to an like island that is actually this populated yet, so we're gonna go to shore. One of the locals passing by in their canoe said that it was okay to go ashore, so we're gonna go check it out. <laughs> we rode to shore. We were greeted by all the kids on the island. We gave them some toys. They gave us a little tour of the island. It was crazy. It was I've never seen anything like that. The infrastructure is really unique. The community seems all really close. It kind of seems to be like a common theme around all the islands here is that it's just like one big family. Like they all kind of collaborate on everything together. I bought some handmade jewelry. They sell molas. All the kids were really happy. They kind of gave us a tour. They were guiding us around, like come with us, come with us. And it's all that shrews with palm like palm leaf, palm frond roofs. It looks really traditional and then we kind of anchored and there was like loads of kids playing around. I'm wondering if this is maybe a a school and it was their break time or something all splashing around in the water and waved at us as we came around. Unfortunately the Spanish on this island was limited so and we don't speak Kuna so unfortunately we didn't practice enough words to be able to communicate but it was like kind of organized little community they had little streets they all had gates 
well, as you walk by, you know, there you can see women sewing the molas, and you can see uh, men carving oars, just right there with machetes, and you see homemade dugout canoes. They're also people like selling growing them. quite an impressive amount of stuff. Like they had, I was showing up, they had red red rice that they like grind into a pulp, I guess, and mix with water. Mm -hmm. And then one garden had some like pumpkins or squashes growing, and they had pigs some corn, bananas, like yeah. cacao. They have what they need. And it's kind of cool being this close to the mainland as well now. The sun's out. You kind of see this like crazy gradation of the basically virgin jungle as far as you can see. With, like hills rolling into the distance. It's really, really cool. I, I don't imagine a lot of cruisers sort of come down this end of San Blas because we're not really at the kind of classic desert island kind of destination here. I think a lot of cruisers will probably skip straight past and go to the sort of places we were at. So yeah, it's quite a cool place to be. What are they? Gangombia. Gangombia. <laughs> Crazy word. But yeah, I guess a little kind of conch. But check out the colour on the shell, it's insane. Our friend there on the little dug out canoe just dropped them off. We did them a little trade for some fish hooks. Seems appropriate. An appropriate trade, I think. <laughs> I think it's a fair swap. Fair trade, yeah. Oh, that one's Conches. bubbling. Yeah, frothing a little bit. I wonder if we should <laughs> put them in water. One of them just came out and it's this like alien looking muscular limb thing. It's, yeah, it <laughs> looks crazy. <laughs> so we're gonna boil, boil them up in a bit and uh, yeah, see, what they, see what they taste like. It's like an alien. <laughs> okay! <laughs> We had to drop off Dom, Ella and Emily in Kati, a small town on the mainland and the only place in the region with road access. Most of the traditional Gunayala villages lie on islands only a few miles offshore, close enough to the mainland to obtain fresh water from rivers, yet far away enough to escape the mosquitoes and other venomous creatures. Clearly, these traditional indigenous Gunayala villages were seldom visited by sailors. In a place like this, it's easy to get fixated on the perfect islands and pristine anchorages that lie further offshore. We're all very grateful to have had the opportunity to visit the village and to have a real taste of the rich culture in this part of the country. Oh my god. I'm so intrigued. Is it? Does it taste like? Really good. Really? Yeah, it's like, like a really juicy muscle. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. That's cool. Can I try a bit? Yeah. Oh my god, that is really good. He's right, it tastes like a juicy muscle. But you look so handsome in that light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this trip has been what I could sort of needed in many regards. I needed a break from work for sure. It's definitely reignited my stoke and drive to get my own, own boat like up to spec and actually get sailing and living on it full time hopefully. So I live in Bermuda, I work at the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences. Well they do all sorts, there's a load of um, scientists that are working on various things but specifically I work on the Bermuda Atlantic Time Series study. So we go off on a research ship every month and collect data offshore and bring it back and uh, process samples and run data and send it out for the scientific community to use. About a year and a half ago, I, I bought a boat. The designs are a Rhodes Reliant. It's called, designed by Philip Rhodes and built in 1965. It's like one of the sort of the early fiberglass boats, kind of similar in many ways to uh, Elixir. She was pretty beat up in a hurricane. Another boat called Ragamuffin, like a big party catamaran, dragged anchor and wrapped around my mooring chain, and basically just pounded into my boat for about six hours and bend down stanchions and the guard rail and the beat up the tow rail and all sorts and the paintwork. And then she kind of just sat for a year or two until I sort of came along and saw her sitting there in a dilapidated state and I, I just <laughs> found out who the owner was and got in touch with him basically and offered him a price for it. Wrote him this little letter about how I'd look after it and restore it to its glory and get her sailing again and, and he accepted my price and yeah, I've slowly, like, slowly been chipping away getting her back up to her former glory since then. 
Although it's a, it's a mission because I'm, I'm basically doing most of it on my own, squeezing it in when I can around work and my work schedule is pretty hectic. So it's a slow process and it can be a bit demoralizing at times. This trip has like made me remember exactly why I'm doing it and that sort of life and goal I'm, I'm striving towards down the line. See some other ocean on some other boat maybe. <laughs> yeah. See in a bit like. Thanks for watching another update from Elixir's Circumnavigation. It would really mean a lot if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel. And yeah, see you next time.